Roger, you have thought deeply about the origins of the universe and have come up with something that I haven't seen really in any other place, and that is a very mathematical description of what the initial conditions of the universe would have to be like. What is it? How does it work? And we'll talk about its significance. Well, I think when you talk about the fundamental issues or problems in, in physics, one of the most fundamental principles of physics is the second law of thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. And the second law of thermodynamics, roughly speaking, tells us that things get more and more random as time goes on, or if you like, the entropy, which is a sort of measure okay. of randomness, is increasing all the time. Now, okay, that's our experience, but it, there is an issue when you worry about you know, where it came from. Now, let's just say, okay, if entropy is increasing in the future, an equivalent way of saying that is that it decreased in the past. Okay. So that means you go back and back and back and back, you reach a low state of entropy. What's the place you get to? The Big Bang. Now, the Big Bang, what's our evidence for it? Well, one of the most striking pieces of evidence for the Big Bang is uh, this thing, sort of curve that people plot, which is the uh, Planck curve that seems to be very well fitted by the radiation coming mm -hmm. from the Big Bang the microwave background. And that is a puzzle because what do we see? We see evidence for what's called thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is maximum entropy. So you go back and back and back in time where you should find the lowest entropy and you find a maximum entropy. That's just obviously funny logic, you see. Well, it doesn't, it's not illogical for the reason that what we're seeing is simply photons coming from matter, roughly speaking, in equilibrium, so mm -hmm. high entropy state. As far as the photons and the matter running around together are concerned, yes, it is a maximum entropy state. That does not take into account gravity. Gravity is very special in the universe as we see it, particularly at the Big Bang, in the sense that it was very uniform. Now, uniform, that's a sort of gravity strange in this way, because when things start to clump, you produce galaxy stars and so on. These come about through the clumping of material and that's raising the entropy. So you get a more clumped state as the entropy goes up. So what you see is a uniform state, and when gravity starts to come into play, it becomes less uniform. But that is all the time raising of entropy. So there's no inconsistency with the second law, it's just it looks funny. It looks more clumpy, whereas mm. if it had just been matter and radiation, it should remain uniform. I mean, there's always been a great puzzle to me a great puzzle which for some reason seems to be largely yeah. ignored by cosmologists which is why it is or why it was i should say in the big bang that gravity was not activated everything else seems to be randomized completely that gravity was aloof was kept back which did not take part in all the activity in the early universe you've got this very uniform state which means low gravity no gravity now for a long time, I just played with this idea, made a hypothesis. I thought maybe it was some aspect of some peculiar quantum gravity theory, which had to be asymmetrical in time, because it's quite unlike what we get in black holes. In black holes, you get gravity dominating, right. and, and right. everything, gravity is, is the main feature of, of, of the mess you get at the right. end. Right. Sure. It's simply not present in the, in the Big Bang. Now, if it were a theory of singularity structure, which uh, was quantum gravity theory, it should be time-symmetric theory. Gravity and quantum theory are both time-symmetric. Why is it yeah. so asymmetrical? So I had to think of maybe crazy quantum gravity theories or so. But my ideas have changed, really, in that it's not really quantum gravity at all. You see, in a sense, it's an argument against quantum gravity, because if quantum gravity ruled at the Big Bang, there should be a contribution from all the other things which might happen. And there simply isn't. It's an extraordinary fact, that this huge imbalance between gravity and everything else. Well, that was a, a driving force behind my CCC, conformal cyclic cosmology scheme, with all the eons, which uh, is that, uh, in order to make it work, the way the transformations work to fit the exponential expansion of the previous eon into the Big Bang of ours, you've got to kill off gravity. Yeah. You can't help it. Yeah. Gravity is killed off. The degrees of freedom in gravity are not killed off, but they're transformed into ripples in the new material, which also the equations tell us have to be there, which I call the initial form of dark matter. 
Now you see that's another mystery. What is dark matter? This is not dark energy, this, no, is, no. this is dark matter. Now, people say, well, maybe it's some super partner of some liberal, you see. <laughs> I say it's not that. It's something which naturally comes along as a partner to gravity, mm. which comes along when you treat gravity in accordance with this conformal scaling idea. Then you find that uh, when you transform from the remote future of the previous eon to the Big Bang of ours, there has to be this new material created. It would be the dominant material in the universe. It would also have to decay gradually over the whole eon, so it's not none left by the end of the mm -hmm. eon. That's another feature that has to be present in this scheme. Uh, but the degrees of freedom that were initially gravitational transform into disturbances in this initial dark matter. To make the initial condition for this universe work, you talk about a very, very high order of magnitude of, uh, of the initial condition. How does that work? Well, it, it's the, the point about the entropy, you see, if gravity is the major contribution to the entropy, which it seems to be in the early universe, at least the absence of gravity, if you like, yeah. then you can say, well, what is the most likely situation if gravity were there? And you can make a good estimate of this because instead of thinking expanding universe, you think of a collapsing one. And then you think of it a little bit perturbed and you wonder what black holes will come and they form and mm -hmm. they collapse and congeal. And then you use the Bekenstein-Hawking formula, well accepted formula for the entropy in a black hole. And you work out what the entropy would arrive at in this completely messy general collapse. Mm -hmm. And you find that the entropy there has a figure, well, it's about 10 to the 124, which means that the improbability of it not being there is 10 to the 10 to the 124. And this just comes from Bekenstein-Hawking formula together with Boltzmann formula for relating probabilities to entropy. And so turning this around, you see, so how unlikely was the absence of gravity that we seem to see in the early universe if, you know, if you imagine the creator sticking a pin in the <laughs> base of all possible universes, you've got to find that little point which is the proportion of that to the rest of it is something like 1 in 10 to the power, 10 to the power, 124. I used to say 123, just a number I got from Don Page, <laughs> the reason being that that didn't include dark matter. But if you oh. dark matter in, in the number is 10 to 124. Now you don't believe that there was a creator with a pen, <laughs> no. so how did that happen? Well, that's where this, uh, I mean, yeah, I've been puzzling over this for decades. But the idea of conformal cyclic cosmology does that automatically for you. And there are two features in this. One of them is that it snuffs off the gravitational degrees of freedom. The, gra the degrees of freedom are picked up in the degrees of freedom in the matter, but they don't give you this huge entropy because that requires actual gravity when forming black holes. So uh, that gives you the low entropy. But there's a second point to this, which is when you think of eon after eon after eon, why isn't the entropy going up and up and up and up and up? As it should, the second law says. Now this is a subtle point, and lots of people have problems with this, because it goes against what's a current view. Namely, well, Hawking, when he originally considered the temperature of black holes and the entropy of black holes, he concluded that, I think correctly, that information, or let's say degrees of freedom, are lost in the black hole formation and final evaporation. So that was what he said. Now, I'm agreeing with him. However, in later years, in the early 2000s, he changed his mind, agreed to lose a bet on this one, uh, and said, no, no, the, ent en entropy, uh, the degrees of freedom must come back. Uh, I think that's wrong. You would must believe that degrees of freedom come back if you believe that unitarity is universally true. That means quantum mechanics in the form of the Schrodinger equation, if you like, is universally true. But then I don't believe that anyway. I believe that whenever a measurement takes place, there has to be a, gra a violation of it. That involves gravity. And that when gravity is very fundamentally involved, such as with black holes, well, then these degrees of freedom can go down the tubes or down the black hole, to be more precise. And when the black hole evaporates, again, Hawking, I agree with him, it will evaporate away in the very remote future, none left, you start again 
with your definition of entropy. Oh. Because when the black hole was there, you said, well, I had a lot of degrees of freedom that I was using previously. Oh. Should I still use these in my calculation yeah. of entropy? When it's gone, you say, well, no use in using yeah. them now. I have to change my mind. I renormalize, if you like, the entropy value. It has now come down. There's never any violation of the second law. It's just I changed my mind about what I mean by entropy. Yeah. And the new notion of entropy has gone way down. So it makes sense, as far as I see. Remains to be seen whether it's the right answer. <laughs>